bless and magnify your holy name. Jehovah, God want to give you the glory, all the honor, all the praises, all adoration. Say, blessed be your name, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Father, we want to join the angels in heaven to worship you. They sense all over the whole world in this season of Advent that Jesus came into the world to save us from sin. And his death gave us eternal life. But I say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Holy Father, as we look into your word, this our Lord, we invite the Holy Spirit, the great teacher, to come and teach us, to make us understand the purpose why Jesus came into the world, so that we'll be able to align ourselves with that purpose, and you know, be glorified in our life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're in the advent of, uh, <clears throat> we're in the season of Advent, the, ki- the coming of Jesus into the world. The question is, why did Jesus come into the world? That is the question we'll be exploring today. Why did Jesus come into the world? Did he come into the world to make us rich? Did he come into the world so we can buy the biggest Christmas tree? Did he come into the world so that we can have the biggest car? Or have the biggest things that the world can offer? Is that why Jesus came into the world? Then we are lacking. We are defeated. Uh Uh-oh. Why? Because those people that don't know Christ, most of them are very rich. (coughs) You see a lot of people in this country who are billionaires. I happen to be looking at area of investment. I look at this billionaire. What made them to be rich? Why why, why are they rich? What education did they have? How were they raised? I discovered one thing in common. It's not because they are Christian that they are rich. In actual fact, there is no Christian who is a bi- well, I don't let me use that word. Most church go most pastors, there's none of them who is a billionaire. The God is billionaire, they actually invent something. They produce an item and they are selling it. And I'm not talking of billionaire they mention in Africa who are stealing from the, the treasury of the nation. I mean like Michael Zuckerberg, uh, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Mark Cuban. And all of them, these are people who start from nothing. They invented little thing in the era of computer. My Bloomberg, all of them, they are very rich. Tom Sayer, these are billionaires. What made them to be billionaires? It's not because they give money to a pastor. It's not because they fast and pray. It's not because they drink holy water. Or they drink anointing oil or they go to a special mountain. That's not what made them to be rich. And Jesus did not come into the world to make us to be billionaires. Oh, oh, pastor, what are you talking about? I'm telling the gospel truth. Jesus did not come into the world so that we can be rich. So those pastors that are telling you they want to double your money, be very careful. They are not representing God. Jesus did not make any, Jesus never promised anybody that. He never said, Peter, if you follow me, you're going to be very rich. If you follow me, you're going to be a billionaire. He has never told any of them. He said, forsake everything and follow me. And Peter said, Lord, what are you talking about? We left everything. Houses, children, brothers, sisters. And we left everything and follow you. What is our reward? He said, well, you're going to have more houses in this world. You're going to have more brothers, more sisters, more fathers. And persecution is going to follow also. It didn't just say you're going to be rich and be free of persecution. Persecution is going to be followed. So when you're a true Christian, and that Christian is supposed to be your true brother and your true sister. That's what Jesus was referring to. But we will not have the same lineage or the same Christian belief and Christian faith. Somebody will look at you like I have some of my friends, Christian brothers. When they, wherever we go, I go to their villages when I was in Africa. They asked me, how is this person your brother? How is this your sister? Because we are so close that people actually think we're the same mother, the same father. And some of them will say, How do you can come to be brothers and sisters? You are from one part of the country, it's another part of this country, and you don't speak this language very well, and it doesn't speak your language. How are you brothers and sisters? I say, Well, it's, it's something very hard for you to understand. So that is what Jesus was talking about. And he, he came. To save us from sin. That is the purpose he came into the world. To translate our body, our spirit, our soul 
from Adamic nature to have God's nature. So we have to be very careful because there are so many pastors today, oh, brothers and sisters, who are deceiving us, deceiving themselves, and be deceived. They think, in order for you to be blessed, you have to give me money. I say, where did they see such a thing? The children of Israel, God said, I will bless the work of your hand. God never said, give me money, I'll make you rich. God himself never made that promise. He said, I will bless the work of your hand. Brothers and sisters, without wasting time, let us look at our Bible passage. We are going to be looking at so many areas. We are going to look at Micah. Take your Bible because we are going to be turning so many areas of the Bible. Go to Micah. <clears throat> Go to the book of Micah. Micah chapter 5 verse 2. Before Jesus came, there was a prophecy. Even thousands of years before he was born. It started from Genesis. And it ran to the end of Old Testament. And it was fulfilled in the New Testament. We are doing Bible verse by verse, line by line. This is the season of Advent. Some people will tell you Jesus was not born on the 25th of December. I don't have time to be debating that. I am not celebrating the date. I am celebrating the historical fact. Nobody can dispute that Jesus came into the world. Even the Muslim people acknowledge that. That he was born by a virgin. And he is a prophet. And he is coming back again. They believe that. So, the historical fact is what we are talking about. It's not the date we are celebrating. Most people may not know when they were born, but you are still alive right now. You know you were born. That is the truth. So, Micah chapter 5 verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephetrata, are you only... Are you only a small village among all the people of Judah? Yet a ruler of Israel, whose origin, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. So God is saying, things that is being neglected, that doesn't look important. That's what God is using to show that He is in charge. The show that is in charge. You know, sometimes people may look down on you because you go to church, because you look, read your Bible, and say, oh, they don't have money. Where Apostle Peter said, you perish with your money. Give the gift of God is not to the highest bidder. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. So Luke chapter 2. Let us go to the Luke, the New Testament. Luke chapter 2. From verses 1. Two seventeen. You know, when you're in your office, your boss may think it's your boss. Or your manager may think he's the one that is controlling your destiny. You know what I always tell us? I told us several times, you do the will of God. You do your work very well as unto the Lord. You be honest at your work. You be the hardest worker. But if any man or woman is against you, it's not just fighting against you. It's fighting against God. And judgment will come to that person suddenly, suddenly, and be destroyed without remedy because it's not fighting against God. So sometimes people are doing things. They may not know why they are doing it. And if somebody is also favoring you, he may not know why he's favoring you. So we have to be very careful that we're in the will of God. Luke chapter 2. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus declared, declared a decree that a censor should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. Here is a president, an emperor. He is thinking he is in charge. But he doesn't know he's not in charge. Because the will of God must be fulfilled. I tell us all the time, don't be in a rush to be rich. Don't let anybody force you to sin against God by saying, oh, you must give me money. And you become poor by giving the money to this guy. And if you don't get that money, that they promise you become frustrated. And we see other people who may be stealing, who may be cheating, who may be doing prostitution, who may be doing so many evil things. They are getting rich. And you say, what is going on? I gave this money. Why am I not getting rich? I'm not saying you should not give. 
But your motive should not be somebody forcing you. If you do God's will, God will bless you at his own time. So, Augustus never knew what he was doing. He wasn't aware. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. You know, during this, this Christmas, people are traveling back and forth. Well, into the news yesterday evening, I say 120 something million people are going to move within this short period. And a lot of them are going to go through the air. Our airport here, Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, say so over uh, 3 million people are going to pass through. I say, oh my God, that's a lot of people. If even they're charging two two dollars, that's a lot of money. If they're charging three dollars, five dollars, all those people that pass through, there's a fee they charge you, TSA fee, in your ticket. So it's not free. Those TSA people are working. They are working for us. So they are getting a lot of money. The more people that pass through, the more money they get. But during this time, because of this decree that was made, people travel. Say everybody has to go back to their native town, to their hometown, to their place of origin. All return to their own ancestral land. Why? To register for a census. Next year, United States of America is going to have 2020 census. The U.S. government usually consults census every 10 years. It doesn't matter who is the president or who is the leader of the Congress or Senate. It doesn't matter. They have to take this census every 10 years. To know how many people are living in the United States, so they know how to divide the money that taxes and revenue that belong to the government, how to divide among the community. The more people they have, the more money they get. So, census is very, very important. So, this guy wanted to know, let us go and take census. Census will be of time of old, from before David. The people were taking census of various kinds. They wanted how many people live in the village's town. Because Joseph was a descendant of King David. Remember when God made promise to David, he said, when next we said, he told David, you're not a king, I'm going to create a dynasty for you. Your dynasty will never end, because you have obey my voice and do my will. He had to go to Bethlehem in Judah. David ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was not expecting a child. Now you have a girlfriend you want to marry. The girlfriend is pregnant. Well, both of you had to travel together because you don't want to leave her. While they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her first born son. She wrapped him struggling in strips of clothes and lay him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. You see, people that do God's will, they are not always rich. So don't let anybody deceive you or mislead you or try to make your faith to be weak by telling you, well, you're not having money because you don't have enough faith. You're not having money because you you should play lottery. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, Christianity has been corrupted so much in the name of money and sex and drug. It's been corrupted. But we should be different from we should be different ourselves. I try to live above the everyday running after money, after fame, after this. Jesus was not fame. He was not famous. He was not rich. But look at the history right now. Jesus is one of the famous guys who ever lived on this planet Earth. If he was here looking for a way to get rich, maybe his name would have been discovered a long time ago. Can you remember how many people were in Abraham's days? How many of them are remembered? Doing God's will is the most important thing. That's what I want us to focus on. Make sure you read your Bible every day, which we are doing. Make sure you pray as much as you can. Make sure you confess your sin. Make sure you live an exemplary, exemplary Christian life in your activity, your day-to-day -day affair. So that if anybody had to judge you, they will say, oh, this guy is a good, is a good guy. Obey the law where you're living in. If it's in that corner with the word of God. And don't let somebody, imp don't let somebody oppress you because you belong to Christ. Do not tolerate it. I don't tolerate it. I will not want you to tolerate it. Because we are the children of God. We are the owner of this earth and the earth belongs to us. It doesn't belong to somebody else. This country is our own country. Verse 8. That night, there were shepherds. Shepherds are poor people. Shepherds, they don't live in a house. 
stay in the field, open place, nearby guiding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said, I bring you good news. I will bring I bring you good news. I bring you good news of great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, Jesus, and the Lord have been born today in Bethlehem. According to Micah prophecy, Quinidus was making a decree that everybody should go to their hometown. These people were living in Galilee, they had to go to Bethlehem. They had to travel. Those days, a short distance was very hard to travel because they didn't have car, they didn't have aeroplane, they didn't have sheep, they didn't have no, it was barefoot or if you have horses or, or wagon, I don't know if they have wagon. So it was very difficult to travel those days. As it, it is most part of the world today. A lot of people see trek. The lot of mode of transportation in most countries and towns around the world is by barefoot. You carry yourself and carry a load upon your head or your back. So they went to Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him. The baby had been born according to the prophecy of Micah made so many years ago. I recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped struggling in strip of clothes, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others. The abyss of heaven praised God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. To those with, to those with whom God is well pleased, when the angel had returned to, when the angel had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, "Let us go to Bethlehem. Let us see this thing that has happened, what the Lord has told us." And they hurried, they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was a baby lying in a manger. And after seeing him, the shepherd told everyone what has happened. And what the angel had told them, and what had told them about this child, all who heard this shepherd's story were greatly amazed, astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. And the shepherd went back to their flock, glorified and praising God for all they had done and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Now, the angel came to the earth. They didn't go to the rich people's palace. They didn't go and meet the, the billionaire of those days, those that think they have money. They didn't go and meet even the priest, those who were in the temple. Why did he go and meet the poor people? Because he's affiliated himself with poor people. That's why I'll be very careful. People that think they are rich, they know God, they are far away from God. They are far away from God. I tell people all the time, see, Christianity has been corrupted today. For those of you who may not have known very much about Christianity, in this country, they send people out those days to go and evangelize the world, the United States of America. They send pa pastors and missionaries to go other parts of the world. They actually go there. They were not seeking their own self-interest. They go there to go and preach the gospel. And to go and love God with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind. But you know what happened? As they go to these different countries, they build schools, they build hospitals. I went to mission school. It was free. We didn't pay school fees. It was established by missionaries. By missionaries. But you know what happened? With time, that school now started growing, producing great men and women, a lot of them who are in the United States today. And our own local people started taking over these churches. Instead of them building more schools, they were buying more cars, having a lot of material things. Those that abuse school now, it wasn't free no more. The hospital are no more there. The roads are no more there. Everybody is not thinking, Jesus came to make them rich. And the Christianity, getting rich, Christianity started here. I always tell you guys, see Jim Baker, then Jim Swagger, 
Then Benihi, then he is of a later period. They took over this get rich scheme and they exported to African people. As it is with anything about Africa, we always tend to follow the bad side. Nobody see most of the hospitals in the United States are churches' hospital. Most of the university, Harvard, Princeton, Columbia, these are church universities. And they were Bible schools. And they still get a lot of scholarship and they actually do proper training. And they started building industry in America here. But when they go to Africa, all they are talking about is you are going to be rich. You are going to be rich. And they corrupted Christianity greatly, I'm sorry to say. And now everybody, the Christianity now become industry. The church now become industry. And industry is about profit. About making money. It's not about saving soul. It's not about causing people to know Jesus Christ no more. And everybody now join the church, the demons, the witches and wizards, everybody. Those that don't know Christ, those who are, who, are the, who are seeking the God of their bellies, they all now come to you. They forgot the purpose Jesus came. That's my sad part. They forgot why Jesus came. We're going to see that. But Jesus and God himself revealed himself to shepherd the poor people. Are you surprised that the people that always embrace Christianity, I don't say all the poor people, rich people don't embrace Christianity, so don't misunderstand me. The poor people that, it's poor people that really embrace Christianity. Those people who think don't have nothing. They actually want to see God because they are looking for a better future tomorrow. Not necessarily financial future, but eternal life. Home in heaven. That's why all those songs we used to sing those days, it was about heaven. My heavenly home. But today, sings, songs, and choir and praises, it's about the earth, <coughs> about sex, about drug, about your body. I'm going to be rich, rich. I'm going to be rich, rich. I'm going to be rich, rich. And they started corrupting Christianity. And today, it's so sad to say that if Jesus was to come today, nobody would recognize him. Because Jesus, if he probably come, or when Jesus came, he was poor. They wouldn't have recognized him. Because his parents were not rich. So that is the danger we are living today. And Jesus even said, when the Son of Man come to the earth, will he find faith? Will he find people who are loyal to him? Or people who are looking for money? It's so sad. But in those days, it wasn't like that. Jesus showed himself to the shepherd. Shepherds were, were not recognized by the Jewish culture. You know why? They don't go to church. They were not giving tithe. They were not giving offering. So for that reason, the church, most of them is about money. But go look at this shepherd and their heart was right. You know, David was a shepherd. They are devoted to their call of duty. That's why wherever you are, <coughs> especially if you are doing a nice job, make sure you do what you're supposed to do. Because that is time God can talk to you when everybody is sleeping. You can find God talking to you in your own place of work. So may God help us in Jesus' name. So the shepherd were talked to. And they went and saw what happened. And they were glorious. They were, they were, they were happy. They were glorifying God. They were praising God. And the angel went back to heaven. Matthew chapter 2. From verse 1. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Remember Micah chapter 5 verse 2. In Judea. During the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem. Asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his stars as he arose. And we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and the teachers of religions, law, and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? People knew Messiah was going to be born. Jews who are blind today, I pray and I hope that God will open their eyes to know that the Messiah has already come. We are expecting his second coming. And when he comes the second time, people will be disappointed. Because a lot of people that think they are serving God right now, they are far away from Him. Because they are God of their bellies, is who they are serving. So in Bethlehem, Judea, they said, the wise teacher, the prophet, and religious leader said, Judea in Bethlehem, that's where Bethlehem in Judea, that's where the Savior was supposed to be, the Messiah was supposed to be born. That's what the prophet Micah wrote. And oh, little Bethlehem in the land of Judah. They are quoting Micah now. You can see it's, it's, it's have a quotation mark in your Bible. Not least among the ruling 
city of Judah, for a ruler will come from you, and who will be the shepherd for my people Israel? Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them what time the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. When you find him, come back and tell me so that I too can go and worship him too. <coughs> so you find that this, this wise man right now they came to worship the king. But they will not know where it is. Because you are looking for something, you may not know what you are looking for. But you know you are looking for something. There is no problem. There, I don't have any problem asking people questions. If I am traveling, I don't know where I am going. I stop to ask somebody. I say, this is where I am going. Can you please tell me? I am never ashamed to ask anybody. But some people don't want to ask anybody. Those are people are lost in this world today. They are lost to Christ, but they are they 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 found what I call religion. They found religion, but they didn't find Christ. These wise men, suppose wise men, they know the Messiah was to be born, but they were lost. There is no problem asking somebody if you are lost. I don't know the road. There is no question. There is no problem asking another Christian brother. Say, brother, I don't understand this. This is bothering me. Can you please explain to me? Don't listen to all these uh, all those uh, tele, 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 uh, televangelists, all these people that preach on, tele, on television. They don't care about you. As a pastor, I call some of these so-called big churches. I want to see their pastor. You cannot see them. People come to my house. My house is open for anybody to come to see me. I have no need to hide. I have nothing to be ashamed of. People come to my house all the time. We sit down to talk. Even other pastors, priests, they come to my house. We sit down to talk. But all these so-called big pastors, you cannot see them. No way. You have to pass through layers or layers or layers or layers or layers. I say, if Jesus was like this, because their hands and their heart is not clean, so they are afraid of something. They want to know where you want to see. They had to pass through layers of layer, and you had to tell them what you are coming to do. You had to write it. I say, this is not right. May God help us in Jesus' name. So Jesus was very simple. The wise men were able to assess him. The shepherd were able to assess him. The poor and the blind were able to touch him, and he mingled with the sinners. He ate with them. Let us look at First Timothy. First Timothy, chapter one, from verses fifteen to seventeen. First Timothy, are you there? First Timothy. You see, this is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Jesus came into the world to make us rich. Is that what he say? Oh no, that's not what he said. Look at your Bible, please. Open your Bible and look at it. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. From verse 15 to 17. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. And I'm the worst sinner of them all i'm the worst sinner worst of them all but god had mercy on me so that christ christ jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patient with even the worst sinners then others will realize that they too can believe on him and receive eternal life all honor and glory to god forever and ever he is eternal king the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God. Amen. This was Paul talking here. He said, I'm happy to God. I'm grateful to God that once upon a time, once upon a time I was blind. Jesus came into the world for one purpose. One singular purpose. To save sinners. You know, every culture, I listen to people. A lot of people come to see me here. And I look at them and I say, they don't understand our African culture, the European culture, the world culture. 
You never go to a man of God house, a pastor house, a king house, somebody who is honorable. You never go to their house with empty hand. You always go there to give them a gift. So, I am not telling you not to go to church and go a gift. Bible says, don't go to the temple with empty hand. That's not what I'm saying. But those people are telling you that you must give certain amount of money, as dollar amount, to be rich or to get your job or to pass your exam. They are fake pastors. They are fake priests. I don't care who they are. They are fake and they don't, they don't represent God. So, the purpose Jesus came into the world is not for us to celebrate with big Christmas tree. Although there's nothing wrong with it, if you can afford it. It's not for us to buy a big car during Christmas. There's nothing wrong with it, if you can afford it. It's not for us to go and buy the most expensive clothes, jewelry. Or to go and buy a expensive gift for our friends, our brothers and sisters. That is not why Jesus came into the world. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. All sinners. If you haven't known Jesus, wherever you are, wherever you are hearing this voice, you are a sinner. If you know Jesus Christ, you go to church, but you don't accept him as Lord and Savior, you are a sinner. If you go to a church only to seek profit, or to look for somebody to have sex with, or to have, se to have sex with somebody, you are a sinner. That's not why Jesus came. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Are you a sinner? I cannot answer it for you. Only you can answer it for yourself. Your heart knows, tell you if you are a sinner. You are a sinner. Sin and repent and be saved. Your heart tells you you are a sinner. The Bible tells you you are a sinner. Sin and repent and be saved. What is in this life is nothing. What is in this life is nothing. Jesus came into the world to save sinners from sins. If you are not yet born again, and you have no Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are a sinner. I don't care how big your, your Christmas tree is. You are celebrating the birth of Christ of whom you did not know. You don't have a relationship with. And a day is going to come, you are going to leave this world, either through natural death or through rapture, whichever occurs first. It is very certain you are going to leave this world. Those of us who have buried our family, our loved one, in the past few months and years and days, and even now, as I'm talking, they see the reality of life, the brevity and the emptiness of life. That this life have nothing. When the person is lowered to the grave, to the sea's foot, and he started filling with sand, say, wow. When, they, when the person, when they cover the coffin, and you live there, you say, wow, this is real. This is real. Jesus Christ died, he was buried, he resurrected, he is coming back again to judge the living and the dead. Jesus came to save us. Are you born again? Have you known Jesus? Are you daily walking in his word and confessing your sins? I mean every day. Every Wednesday we have prayer between 12 noon. And uh, those of us who join us during the prayer, there's one prayer that one of us usually pray, say, God, we are a sinner, forgive us our sin. We are like fish that is swimming in the ocean. We are in this world. We mingle with people who are not sin who are not Christians, who don't know you. And because we associate with them, one way or the other, we may have sinned against you. Forgive us, have mercy upon us. That's a very that's a very powerful prayer. I don't teach people how to pray. I just say, you pray your own. I pray. We all pray together. And when I listen to that prayer, I am say, this is true. That's what the Bible says. That's what he told Isaiah. I say, Isaiah said, I'm a man of unclean lips because I dwell among people who are unclean. Are you saved? If you are celebrating Christmas without knowing the purpose where Jesus came, brothers and sisters, you have been deceived. If your church is telling you, you have to give a lot of money to your pastor during this Christmas, you have been misled. Led and you are you are you are still a sinner and you are deceived. Jesus came into the world for a singular purpose to save sinners. And I'm happy Jesus saved me. I'm happy those of us on the line today, 
Jesus Christ have saved us. And if you are not yet be saved, I'm not inviting you to give your life to Jesus. So that you have the joy. The, it, Jesus Christ did not come to make you rich. Although that's part of it, but that's not his goal. He didn't come to make us very, very worthy. He came to save us. To give us eternal life. So those who are telling you, if you're, if you're a Christian, name it and claim it. You know what they are doing? They are deceiving you and they too have been deceived. I'm sorry to tell you, last night I watched a documentary about Jim Baker. He was one of the early preachers of the gospel with Tammy Baker. They started preaching on television here. They were actually promising people heaven. And I didn't feel comfortable that time. I was right here. I did not feel comfortable. But if, what if you don't have money? Maybe you don't go to go to heaven. That was my question. I was always saying, what, what if you don't have money? What if you're a poor man? Does it mean a poor man cannot serve God? Anyway, they corrupted the church so much that they brought shame to the church because of the drug and sex and all the stupidity, all the stupid thing they were doing. They dry the name of God to mud. I'm sorry to say that, but it happened. Then other people started running with it. The same philosophy because the sensual part of us won the best. But Jesus, when he was on earth, yeah, he didn't have so much material things. He didn't have mansion. He didn't have big houses. And they started telling people until they were caught in their own deception. Jim Baker is still on television today. He's not selling things. Most of the time he sells. Sometimes I watch them. And when I sit down to watch them, some, my wife may say, oh, you want to order that? I say, no way. I'm not here. I'm not selling. Don't, we don't. Have you ever heard me advertising anything for you guys to buy? No. I don't, I don't tell you to buy anything. Get your own Bible. It's even online. You can download it for free. We don't sell anything. We don't buy anything. And when people try to advertise something here, I write to them and say, if you don't take time, we're going to ban you from ever being on this, on this uh, our channel. So, we have to be very careful that we're not being deceived. Benny Hill is going to Africa and telling them with other pastors that in order for you to be rich, you have to give money. Why? These people are poor. They can barely eat. Every poor person in this America is richer than most rich people in Africa. But they see good there to make money out of their hand. I said, this is madness of the highest order. But they are not telling them why Jesus came into the world. Jesus Christ did not come into the world. Say, well, if you believe me, you are going to be rich. Once you accept Christ. Otherwise, everybody would have believed Christ. The whole world would accept him simultaneously. We like pleasure. We like things. Name it and claim it. If you just believe in Christ, you see a beautiful girl. Hey, I name, I claim you. You're my girlfriend. You're my wife. You see a handsome rich man. Oh, you're my husband. If that was what Christianity was all about, then we're in serious trouble. And if you see people doing that and you're not able to do it, you begin to question your own faith. Say, brother, what's going on? I believe, but I'm not getting this result. 1976, I was teaching Bible school. Uh, I, was, I was a Sunday school teacher. And then some of my students asked me, Say, Pastor, I pray and fast. I am not getting this miracle. What is going on? My brother wasn't a pastor that time. What is going on? I said, You know what happened? Jesus said, We're actually going to suffer if we believe in Him. He didn't promise us riches. People come to church, they give testimony. Oh, I give one dollar to a pastor and I pray and fast and I get this. That's okay. I don't have anything. Give me money to a pastor. Please don't misunderstand me. But your purpose is not to get rich. You give gifts to your friends. If you give to them to get back, you are making a mistake. As I told you guys all the time, most of you that know me in person, I like to help people. I help a lot of people with their job, with their resume, with their money management issue and budgeting and everything. I don't ask for nothing back. I'm not doing it so that you can even listen to the word of God. Because the word of God I'm preaching to you, I'm teaching to you, I am not selling nothing. If you join, you're not, you're not, you're not helping me. If you don't join, you're not helping me. So, I don't have any benefit from it. 
A lot of people have been there. Sometimes we have a lot of crowd. I listen to it. You know, most people say, most people say, Pastor, no, I am on the. I, I listen to it after you post it online. I say that's fine. It's for your own benefit. I have nothing to sell. Jesus said, wherever they, where where two or three are gathered, what did they say? I mean, they're missed. So all I need is one person to join me, and that's we already th- we already two. Another one, three. Whatever we ask God, He's going to do it. Jesus was not looking for a big crowd. When he had a big crowd, he said, Are you willing to carry the cross? Are you willing to eat my flesh? Are you willing to suffer? They said, Oh, no, we don't want to do that. They, walk, they went back. And he asked Peter, Are you willing to go back away also? Peter said, No, who shall we go to? You have, you have eternal life. So when you see the crowd, be weary. When you see these big churches, start talking to each of them after the service. Say, What did you learn from the service today? Oh, it was so good. What makes it to be good? They haven't learned nothing. And most people in that church find that there are a lot of single guests with children. Who are they? Who is the father of this guest of this uh, children? And who is their mother? And who is their husband? They just come to church. They're looking for somebody. And when you talk to these women, they have three children from the three different men, and they come to church every day. I say, who is deceiving who? They are weakening the family. They are weakening the family. That's not the will of God. Because a child without proper fatherly and motherly love is going to end up rebellious in the future. There may be an exception. That child missed something. A young man came to my house at that time. We were walking. He was coming to help me check some of my items. I said, how are you doing? He said, I'm fine. He said, my mother is always proud of me. And when he left, I told my wife, did you hear what that guy is saying? He never took out the father. Most people that walk with me, they always say, my mother, my mother. Where is your father? Because their father is missing their life. And my little boy was telling me, say, Dad, a lot of children want to say that they wish you are, you are their dad. He said, why? Because they have no father. Because I come to school, I'm always, I'm always involved in my kids' school. They see me all the time. All these jazz. The principal, everybody know me. Even up to the superintendent. They all know me. Because I'm involved in the school. I don't, just, I don't want to send my kids to school and say, if you want to go to hellfire, go to hellfire. No. I want to be there for them and with them. We are all going to school together. I tell the teacher, I say, the school is a three-legged stool. One leg belongs to the school, one leg belongs to the teacher, and one leg belongs to me. That leg that belongs to me, I have to make sure it's standing. He said, we can see that. My little boy was telling me a story. He said, he said Dad, you remember when I was in that school, the other school before? I said, yes. He said, the teacher that was teaching me when we have conference, he said, that's five years ago. Say, teacher, still remember me. Say, your, your father is a pastor. Your father wants you. I have 93. Your father said he did not pass. And teacher was asking me, your son is getting 93. He said he did not pass. I said, no, he didn't pass. He said, what do you mean? I said, 96 and above is the passing grade for me. That's that's an A. I said, that's what you put in your own something. Look at it. I said, anything below that one is A minus. I said, so if you get A minus and you have A, go to real work in real life. He's going to find himself lacking. He said, teacher, I still remember me. I still remember you. I said, I want to be involved in my kid's life. A lot of pastors are not involved in their church members' life. All they're interested in is how many numbers I have. How many money I'm collected. My private jet, my big house. Where I went for vacation. May God help us in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, we must make sure our heart is in God. We love God. We fear God. We obey God. We do God's will. Every other thing in this world is rubbish. This hour I'm talking to you right now, somebody is in Nigeria. is burying one of his family members, one of our partners in the ministry. As I'm talking right now, this is a young person that just died. Life is not, this world is not our home. This world we are living in is not our home. If anybody is trying to make you this world, is trying to make you to believe that this world is your home, they are liars. Don't believe them. But Jesus promised us, say, we should not be afraid of death. Our home is in heaven. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let us look at Luke chapter 19. Jesus came into the world for one singular thing. To save sinners. Luke chapter 19, from verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a, a man there named Zacchaeus. 
He was the chief tax collector in the region and he had become very rich. This man was very rich. He had to get a look at Jesus and he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a cigarmont fig tree beside the road for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and saw him and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your house today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has come to be with the guest of a notorious sinner. This guy is a notorious sinner. He is the worst of the worst sinner because he is cheating people by collecting crap. They grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give my I will give half my weight to the poor. Lord, if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. That's why Jesus came. So, you know, when I want to apply for my children's school, they say, we want your tax return. When I want to do anything, they want my tax return. When I'm applying for this, they want my tax return. I'm saying, why my tax return? Because they want to know what you are saying is a reflection of your task. But there's somebody who is ruling this country right now, and so many religious people are supporting this person. He said, I don't want to have my task. Ret- I don't want people to see my task. Because when I see your task, I can see how you are making your money, whether you are truthful or lying. If you have nothing to hide, why don't you show your taxes to the whole nation? Brothers and sisters, be very careful what we support and what it will make us support. This man was a notorious man. He was rich, but he was a crook. He was a thief. He said, Lord, Jesus Christ never asked him anything. Just by meeting Jesus, he said, I'm going to give half of my weight. I'm going to, people have cheated. I'm going to return them four times. That is even above the Bible requirement. Meaning, I'm ready to change. That is the purpose of Jesus coming into the world, to save sinners. If you say you are a Christian, you are still cheating, you are still lying, you are still involved in sexual immorality, pornography, drug, alcohol, and becoming drunk and be giving bribe and taking bribe, and you say you know Christ, you haven't known him. You are already deceiving yourself. Because when you know Jesus, if you, if you, in the presence of Jesus alone, your life is changed. It's transformed. This man said, Jesus never said a word to him. For the mere fact that Jesus came into his house, he, he was so happy. He said, Lord, I give back four times as much what I have taken from these people. If I have cheated people on their taxes, I give back four times. Bible never even asked us to give four times. He said double. But this guy said, I want to go above and beyond the, the, what, what the law requires. Because if I have cheated them, because you are come to my half of my money, I'm going to give it to the poor. The other half, I'm going to pay people back whatever I own them. Have you ever confessed? It's your mate, your friends, your brother, your sister, your co-worker. They don't know you are a Christian or you are still manipulating numbers. You are still cheating. And you don't want people to know what you are doing. And you are fighting by all means to hide what you are doing from people. You haven't known Christ. If you know him, you must repent. You must say, I'm sorry. There is no reason to say, I'm sorry. This guy say, I'm sorry, Lord. If I have offended anybody, if I have cheated, because everybody is not happy with me, I have repented. Have you repented of your sin? That's why Jesus came into the world. If you haven't repented, the Christmas is not for you. But if you have repented, rejoice. Let your heart be glad. Enjoy as much as you can with your family. And uh, share with those who have nothing to eat, the poor, the orphan, the widow. And if you can give to your pastors, so most pastors are poor. I like to, I like to, I send money to lots of pastors. Even as I'm talking to you right now, we do it all the time. May God help us in Jesus' name. Usually we wait until the Christmas is over. Around January, we start sending our gifts to people who are, who are poor. We begin to send them money. 
because they have spent all their Christmas, everybody generally is dry. That is time we start sending money to them. So I'm not against sending money to people, but nobody forced me to give. I give out of my own free will. And nobody should force you to give. Not me. If I force you to give, don't give. I'm telling you right now. If I say you must give to become rich, say, Pastor, no, I'm not going to give. You told me not to do it. Why are you telling me to do it now? Then you can always correct me. If you see I'm going wrong, I'm not above reproach or mistake. We should, we should help each other. May God help us in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, we're going to stop here today. Next week, we're going to continue with where we stop or may, may talk a little bit about the coming of Christ and why he came into the world. May God help us in Jesus. Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If Jesus, if you are made Jesus, if you, if you know Jesus, repent. If you are cheating, turn back. If you are a drunkard, turn back. If you are a homosexual, if you are well, not homosexual, if you are a person who has sex with so many people, turn back. If you are a cheater, turn back. And give a light to if you are cheating people, return back to them. You cannot say I'm, I'm born again. Oh, I forget. I'm born again. Then you are still keeping what you have stolen. And you are even trying to hide it from people. That you haven't known Christ. If you know Christ, you must repent. May God help us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Father, God, I want to bless and magnify your holy name. Jehovah, God, I want to give you the glory, all the honor, all the praises, all adoration. We say, Blessed be your name, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father, God, I want to worship you because you are the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that walketh in the wings of winds, the one that says, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavenly, I will give you rest. We want to thank you for Jesus coming into the world to save us from sin. We thank Jesus for coming to the world to save us from sin. We thank God that when Jesus came into our lives, our life is changed. We are no more the same. Those things we used to do, we do them no more. Those bad, bad, bad stuff we used to do, we don't do them no more. See, Jesus came into our heart. There had been a change in our life. We are born again. See, Jesus came into our heart like Zacchaeus of old. He said, if I have cheated people, I repent there. All those bad, bad things we used to do, we, we thank God we do them no more. That is the essence of Jesus coming to the world. And to help the poor, the orphan, the widow. He said, I was naked. I was poor. I was homeless. I was in prison. I didn't have nothing. You came and helped me. Father, give us the grace to always remember that we only have the poor with us always. And to remember the poor among us. In Jesus' name. Holy Father, well, as you bless us and bless this nation and bless our children and bless our brothers and sisters at this season of Advent, the coming of Jesus into the world to save sinners. We are glad that Jesus came to save us from sin. Hallelujah. Jesus came into the world to save us. I ask the Almighty God to bless us in this season and to deliver us from the evil one, from every unreasonable person. May our going now be blessed. May our coming be blessed. Even as our children are holiday right now for this Christmas season. Father, bless them. Be with them. Deliver from accident, from terrorists, from sicknesses, from disease, from poverty, from the hand of the evil one. Deliver from de de deceptors, deceivers, who may want to pretend to be representing you in order to steal our money. Father, give us the grace to love you and to fear you. In Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, I ask Jehovah God to bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we find favor with God and Master what we come in contact with today in Jesus' name. God bless you. Merry Christmas. And God's blessing.